everyone and welcome to this week's video. We are going to be painting waterfalls. So water in motion and I, I want to really get the feeling of the, the power of the water tumbling over the rocks. So I thought it would be fun to work on a, a textured surface this time. So I decided to make my own textured surface and I'm going to talk about how I did it in another post with showing you step-by-step -step photos. But so today I just want to show you what I used. I used a piece of white multimedia board uh, that you can you can buy or you can use matte board or thick paper anything you want. I used clear gesso <clears throat> this was by Liquitex and I toned it using some well this happens to be oops paint you know what oops paint is is when you go to the hardware store and they have the discards that you get for cheap I happen to find this paint that to me looked like just about the same color as the old Wallace Belgian mist. And so those of you who have been painting a while have probably used or maybe you've heard about that uh, Wallace Belgian mist paper and it's not exactly the same but it was close enough and it was only a dollar. So what I did was I used a couple drops of this in with the clear gesso and I painted it on with a hardware brush and I want to show you how I painted it in, in you know what I just thought of I could take this and have them color match to make a sample paint. We should do that. Michael, put that on our list because then we can really be accurate. So I'm going to put this aside. And what I want to show you, and you, if re you probably cannot see it in the video, but I'm going to just show you what I did. When I applied that clear gesso tinted mix, I knew that I was going to be painting this waterfall. So I made the brush stroke follow along the way the water is going over the rocks. So if you look very carefully you can see the texture kind of duplicates what I want to paint. I made straight horizontal marks here, I made rock shapes here, and of course I went crazy and made a lot of gestural brush strokes to represent the foliage. So the idea is that I'm setting myself up for the textures that I want to achieve in the painting. Have I ever done this before? Do I know if it's going to work? No, but I thought it would be fun to play with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually use the same palette of pastels that I have been using for this month's um, paint along video. So if you guys are silver members, you've been painting along with me and you know that these are the colors that I've been using. And I'm going to just challenge myself to use the same colors because it's similar um, see. I'm going to use a pastel pencil just to reinforce those big simple shapes that I see. So we have rocks coming in, setting up those, um, the way the water is flowing, right? So the water, there's a level, there's another level, and they're about, about the same size. I'm going to move that down just a little bit, like so. And then there's the end of the waterfall and then there are some rock shapes down here. So I'm going to just kind of mask in. There's in the photo, in the reference photo, there's some guys sitting in a, a boat, maybe fishing at the base of the waterfall. I'm not going to include them. Not today anyways. And then we have the foliage. We have this nice lighter tree mass here and like a nice really dark mysterious area up at the top of the waterfall. And that's enough. Uh, marks so that I know where I'm going. So I begin the painting as I begin every painting and that is by reinforcing the dark areas. So the dark areas if I squint at I can see where they are. We have the dark mysterious area at the top of the waterfall. It kind of goes up like this up into the to the top. We have dark areas where the rocks are in shadow. And then there's a dark area at the base of the waterfall <clears throat> and at the bottom of the rocks where they are sitting in the water. So those are my dark shapes. I'm going to go ahead and add another layer in those dark shapes. This is so loud, you hear, because it's I'm going on top of that clear gesso. By the way, if you're not familiar with using clear gesso it actually has a little bit of a grittiness to it and so when you use it it creates a little bit of tooth for your pastels not a lot but enough that you can hear it scratchy 
let's see that's two layers now we know that this is really green up here so I'm going to add a dark green up at the top and a dark green down at the base of this foliage but I don't think I need to put too much dark green in the rocks themselves so that's three layers of dark I think I'm going to do just one more and I'm going to use a dark blue because it starts to get lighter and cooler as we go up into the, up towards the sky. Of course there's no sky showing in this particular scene. It's all about the water and the waterfall. Alright, so there's the dark shapes. Now what I want to do is go ahead and put in the first layer on the rock planes. So where they are getting that middle value light on the top of those rocks. And over here. I'm using a dull mauve color for this for this step. Now if I look in the waterfall itself, there, we can still see some of the rocks uh, underneath the water. So I have to establish this right now before I can pull the water on top. And of course there's the rocks at the base of the waterfall. Well, these are starting to look a little bit too similar in shape and size. So I'm going to break up the rocks over on the left hand side just a little bit. And then again it's coming over here on the right. This is just a kind of a brownish, kind of a beige color. Alright, now before I go any further, here, here it is, I'm going to take my really super dark Terry Ludwig eggplant and I'm going to just put in some of those cracks, some, some of the cracks on some of the rocks and then put in dark areas right at the bottom or the base of these rocks down at the uh, where the waterfall ends. And that's enough. If I put this dark color everywhere, then it really is much too dark and it really takes away, it's not as powerful. If you use it in little bits, then it's much more powerful. So, next thing, I've got all the darks, I've got the middle values on the rocks. I think what I'm going to do is establish some of the foliage. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not able to cover everything up completely with the pastel because of the grooves that are in the uh, rough surface because of the uh, gesso. It doesn't bother me, but sometimes it is not helpful. And so what I'll do is I'm just using a piece of pipe insulation, you can use any blending tool, and I'm just going to simply blend in some of these areas, which is basically filling in the cracks of the um, paper, of the surface. Again, it's not completely critical that you do that, but now I'll be able to go on with uh, the next layers to cover up and refresh. I can come back in and refresh. Oops, that's the wrong color. The purple. Reflect, refresh some of those marks of the rocks. Alright, let's go back to the foliage. And hopefully what I had put down underneath that rough surface will help give some texture and a feeling of foliage without me having to paint a lot of individual leaves. And that's the idea. I'm using a cooler green, duller green, up into the top of those trees. And in the shadowed areas, there's a little bit of trees poking in off the side. And let's see, we have a nice blue-green we can use for those distant pieces of foliage. And then, let's see, we'll get a little bit more... I want, I want to pull some of the foliage over this mysterious dark area. I want to leave it dark, so I just want a little bit of the foliage showing. Same as it comes over the rocks and the waterfall. I just want a little bit showing. 
again, hopefully the rough surface will do the work for me. Now, we have some green reflected in the water, so I'm going to put the green in the water, but I'm going to use those horizontal strokes. A little bit warmer, kind of a more of a yellowy green up closer. And then some of these leaves are catching some of the light, so I'm adding a little bit of a warmer yellow green to those areas. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you, you've gotten, you know, pretty far along, but you haven't touched the waterfall. And isn't this painting about the waterfall? And it's just like really anything else you paint. Sometimes the most important things have to come last because you have to bake the cake before you can put the frosting on it. And so that's what I'm doing right now by laying in all the foliage and all of the other details. Now we can come in and put in the waterfall. All right, so, oh, I need to add the light to the rocks before I do that. You see how the rock faces are getting, catching some of the, the light? So I'm using kind of a pale, pale peach to hit the tops of the rock with, with some of the light. And also there's a reflection of that water in, or the, yeah, the waterfall in the, calm area of the water, the calm area. All right, so now let's do the waterfall. So we're going to start actually with a darker color than we want the waterfall to be. So I'm picking a kind of a blue-green and I'm just simply pulling the water as if I am pulling the water over myself. So I know the, wa the w where the rocks are and I know the way the water is flowing over the rock. And I actually made my, my brush strokes, you can see, if you can get in close, you can see where I'm making these marks that I have those linear marks kind of go flowing over the rocks. And I'm not doing anything, it's actually the, the surface that's doing the work. So that's a darker blue. Back up at the top is kind of a blue, a, a uh, gray down blue-violet, very pale. You know, our brain tells us that waterfall, white water, is what? What color? I just gave the clue, right? Our brain tells us white water is white. But if we were to use a white pastel to create the white water, then chances are it's going to look chalky, like chalkboard chalk, white. And we don't want that. We want it to look like it has color and life to it. So I'm starting off with blues and violets to paint the water. Here's a darker, uh, I used a darker warm blue. This is a darker cool blue. And I'm letting some of the water spill over like on the outside of the waterfall so that it's not just one big solid mass. There's an other area right in here that I want to reinforce with, by putting the rock back in because I, cover, I put in too much water and we don't see the rock anymore. So I took the color of the rock to put it in. Now, I'm going to gradually get a little bit lighter and brighter with my water, but this is just a pale blue. Put it over here, and here it's a little bit more solid where the water comes over. So it's a little, coming in a little bit heavier right in the center, so I'm pressing a little bit harder. And then where it comes spills over this, we have this nice solid area, right? A lot of turbulence in that water. And then right where it hits the rocks, it's kind of splashing up, so I'm going to use that. And look at how the underpainting is still, it's doing a lot of the work. Now, I'm going to take another blue, and I see where some of the water is just spilling over, and we can actually see linear marks. So I'm going to create like nice linear marks spilling over the rocks like that. So I'm pressing, and I'm actually just making marks with the side of the pastel. And it's doing the same thing up on this other tier. Now the final thing that I want to do is add it, the light. And again, I don't want to use white, pure white. It would look chalky. So I'm using a pale yellow. And a pale yellow 
will create a feeling of sunlight on the white water. And if I use what pure white like chalk, it would just look chalky. It wouldn't be beautiful. And I'm just pressing down pretty hard at this point. And remember that some of it was reflecting in the water, so I'm going to pull it down and then I'm going to just swipe over it with my finger just to soften this and pull some more water, green water, over that and add just a little hint of the white water in the in this pool that's just underneath. So it's just spilling and it has a little bit of turbulence. Now I could do, if I wanted to make it spray, I could take that trick and, and flick some um, spray off a toothbrush, but I'm just going to make a few little marks just to indicate some spray. Occasionally, if I really want to brighten up an area, I will take a, a lighter light. This one is almost white, but I will use it with care because again, if it's everywhere, it's nowhere. Just like the super dark, using a super light, if you put it everywhere, it loses its impact. So you want to be kind of mindful about where you use that. The final thing that I'm, I'm going to do to this painting is I'm going to take a little bit of workable fixative. And always, you always want to step back. I need a little bit of more light right up in here. I'm going to spray ooh, with some workable fixative. This is a brand new can, so it just kind of came out like crazy. Um, and what I want to do is let that dry because when it dries and I come back over it, it skips over that dark part and I get a better feeling of foliage, again, without me having to paint a lot of foliage. So I'm just coming in with some of the greens that I already used. I'm just going to give it another coat so that I can get a little bit more refinement in some of this, the green foliage areas so that I can really reinforce the setting. I'm just going to make a few leaf shapes down in here pointing to the water. And then again, we need a few leaf shapes down in here pointing us to the water. And I think the only thing left to do is I really need to reinforce where this waterfall is starting up at the top because I've kind of lost my rock shape so it looks like it's starting out of nowhere. And a little bit more showing where that stream must be up there where it's starting to trickle over that top, where it spills over the top. And again, I'm going to stop now because I think you've got the idea. I do need to step back kind of reevaluate my shapes and how much detail I actually really want to put in. But I think you get the idea and I think that the texture really works well for the um, for the waterfall. So I'm going to detail how I did that texture in a post later this week. But I hope you have enjoyed this demo of rushing whitewater waterfalls. So have fun with it.